this is first module on this topic for watching fairy tales in urdu please visit this site here this is a daily motion uh, some of you may already be using it uh, to see uh, famous tv plays etc so th at this site you can uh, find fairy tales which are written in urdu language it is a common observation now i would tell you later how would you use this as reading of fairy tales from this website it is a common observation we all observe this we are know this that private schools have been teaching nursery rhymes and fairy tales selected from english literature and humpty dumpty uh, little uh, twinkle twinkle little star etc etc and many fairy tales in which fairies uh, they come to help some helpless person suddenly uh, so such kind of literature is being taught to children at uh, nursery level we will see if this literature has been promoting if this literature has been shaping minds of children to accept patriarchy male domination male superiority through characters which they uh, they are exposed to through nursery rhymes and fairy tales so they uh, get a different impression about the male characters and female characters uh, and on the basis of that they have uh, they develop a particular thinking about males and females males are powerful females are helpless etc females are beautiful and males are strong and brave so such kind of things are conveyed silently to the children for this purpose we will discuss to understand whether patriarchy male supremacy is communicated through this literature to discuss this we will uh, read we will go through findings of a research that was conducted by a pakistani gender scholar the findings are derived from the sample of fairy tales which were selected from grimm's fairy tales this researcher selected a sample a few uh, fairy tales from grimm's uh, tales fairy tales and this is very old collection of fairy tales uh, you see the date was 1812 but it is uh, published again in 2000 okay this was his source of fairy tales this topic is not new for you but now we are talking about it in the perspective of that pakistani researchers finding the things i uh, would discuss here they are new uh, not new to you uh, we know this uh, we have talked about all of these things in detail in our previous modules first he finds out from his sample after analyzing the fairy tales his first conclusion was that women's beauty is highlighted in these fairy tales and nursery rhymes and uh, I, I, you can recall bardu's fairy a french uh, scholar french philosopher i have introduced him to you uh, he says that women have a cultural capital their beauty is a cultural capital a kind of wealth with them which they can use for their benefit uh, similarly communicative skills are cultural capital with women so we have talked about this so this finding matches with bardu's point of view see this piece of a text as an evidence the youngest of whom was so beautiful that the whole world looked on her as a wonder this is how the beauty of the girl is being exaggerated kis tarah mubalagha usme kiya ja raha hai 
and uh, she was as white as snow. See this simile, istiara chano ka aap usme istemal kiya hai. As rosy as apple blossom. Is that say fresh, jaise wo seb ka phool ho. And her hair as radiant as sunbeams. And you see, the hair are so shiny uh, that uh, they are being compared with sunbeam. Beautiful girl is good. Another conclusion. Beautiful girl is good and ugly one is bad. Ugly means that is not beautiful. Ugly girls have less chances of marriage. This is another conclusion relating to women's beauty. Now, the second major finding is women traits are linked with class and profession. Taylor's wife is good, uh, being lower class, industrious, hardworking, and pious. She is modest. But King's daughter from royal family is beautiful and proud. This is something negative with her. So, okay. Compare this pride with pious, with piety. So, these features, these attributes are linked with women of different classes. Female cook is a liar uh, because working class. So female cooks often uh, tell lie, and a glutton. They eat a lot. Pay too. Miller's daughter, the person who works in some factory, etc., small factory, individual work. Just uh, in villages, you uh, you see. Uh, Atta Chakis, so Miller. Miller's daughter was a modest, bahia hai, and beautiful, innocent, and obedient. So, these things, uh, modesty, innocence, beauty, and uh, pride, they are spread across classes. It depends to which class the girl belongs to. Number three, another finding of that researcher is males have animal qualities such as strength, swiftness, domination. They are attributes of animals. Females are painted as insecure, threatened, rare mafus. They are weak, they are emotional, they are crying for attention. Such kind of attributes are assigned to women. And uh, you already know, we have talked about these comparisons uh, more than once in our previous module. Here is a task to think upon these ideas. Watch at least two tales from the online source which was introduced in the first slide of this module. Do you agree? with the findings of this Pakistani researcher after watching uh, uh, two tales. Do you agree with the views of the researcher? Support your answer again with quotes from the tales. We conclude from this module that fairy tales promote gender stereotypes of the society. These are the views of men and women which are desired by society. So, society uses fairy tales and nursery rhymes to promote, to convey these things to young children. They reflect roles and attributes which are conventionally related with men and women of different classes, especially. Class is also involved with them.